better okay. email address. So Great stuff. We'll I'll trade and I'll, I'll email you those. Uh, okay. Picture. Thanks. Thanks. This is this is Rick's Rick's business card there. Oh yeah. So it's Sunday morning. This is Tumblr. I think we told about half the room we were doing the raffle before the talk, and the other half of the room we were doing the raffle after the talk. So we're going to do the raffle after the talk, uh, after the question and answers, immediately. And the way we've got it set up, and Heather's done a great job. And I want to thank Heather, too, while I'm up here. Because she's helped us so much. Uh, and also, Joanna and Carol have, have done so many things for me. And uh, thank you for that. They put together the conference packets and the, and the name packs. So, uh, and Matthew, and the verbal descriptions were still more powerful, and the photographs were as wonderful as they were. They didn't tell as much as they should have, or you would have expected from the belief people had in photography. Uh, they were surprisingly staged and surprisingly, um, I don't know what I want to say, decorous, and. Uh, and felt a lot of times, as I tried to show in the, in the shirts of the waiters and that kind of thing. That I, that's what was surprising, is that there was a much balder, uh, uh, sharper observational tone to the writing about these things and to the, the photographs themselves. Yeah? Um, in 1999 to 2002, I did a degree in criminology, and they asked me to stay behind to help research after I'd finished. And I was researching the newspaper presentations of, of women in the crime, women victims, and I was having to analyze the journalist viewpoints as whether women were deserving or undeserving of their fate, you know, what language they used for, um, <coughs> and, and I wondered if in, even as early as that, did you find that, say, the prostitute is considered deserving, I don't know if you find some form of it's just one stuff, they call it Ripperologists eating. Yeah, and the tables and the bushes are covered with You know, you don't know what you're reading. It's terrible. Well, it's not it's some of the chicken. He isn't even rich. It's written by Oh, no, 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 they're Knoxville, Surrey, apparently. Oprah type of thing. Mm. On Special Branch and the Whitechapel Murders. Thanks, um, Martin. Uh, right. Um, the first, first things first, I, uh, I wrote a very, very detailed um, script to work from, and I'm not going to work from it. Um, <laughs> but I am going to use it as a kind of basis for everything. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be, uh, to meet Martin's expe expectations, but really I'm trying to keep this at a lower level because I'm kind of aware that while I, you know, while I've gone into this history a lot, most people won't actually know very much about this, his, this particular history. Uh, Two or three one conference later, going out for a final meal in downtown Knoxville, in uh, Woodruff. Um, very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> but I looked at Richard Pryor, and I thought, oh my god, to be able to say, hello, motherfuckers. Uh, <laughs> there is a freedom I had not got. Yeah, no, Richard Pryor is my yeah, all time comedy. Yeah, the class it's so hard to like swing that. Yeah. But you could have done it last night. Yeah. Yeah. Martin Fido oh, singing oh, Whittacombe oh, Fair. Oh, He's oh, very no, drunk. No, 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 no. <laughs> I don't deal with that. This is great. Right. He's on verse three. Oh, no. <laughs> I've stopped. We'll take that doesn't count because I've stopped. <laughs> it was a request. He just that like, it was a request. <laughs> Karen had enough that's after like the first verse. <laughs> 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 All right, sing, sing, sing your heart out, Mark. No, 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 no,
I'd know the song, I wouldn't know the words. But I'd know the song, obviously, when I heard somebody singing it. What are you going to sing? It's not fun until Alan is singing. Danny Boy. Danny Boy. Oh. Just throw the question at him. This evening is not finished until Danny Boy sings. No, 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 no not, not till Danny Boy is singing Alan. Alan is singing Danny Boy. Because there's no such song called Alan. Right. Yeah. <laughs> His name is not Danny Bush. I've only said that before too. And that's my limit, so I'm drinking water the rest of the Other people are going to take these seats. I think we should wait to ask him until he might be in a more of a mood. Oh, it's a And it'll be more fun anyway. Well, is he driving? I didn't sing it all the Maybe. I can drive the rest. I mean, he might not do it. Anyway. I think it's something he did once, and people keep reminding him about it and make him sing it. Let's be honest, Maybe we better not press him then. Oh, done that with the word of the originals. Do you want something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want it? Like a fire hydrant. Right, we moved. That place we were in went, went, and, went and shut down um, for the evening. So we're all out there. Um, Alan's getting quite merry. That's nothing to do with us, that's some other people. Martin's gone back in. He'll probably not find his way out again. Martin is very drunk. As is his want. This is the marketplace in uh, downtown Knoxville. Look at the rubbish lying everywhere in the stink. And that's, uh, that's a lie, by the way. It's so clean here. I'm not liking the idea I've got to go back to England because it's not clean, and it smells, and it's cramped. And you feel threatened on the streets. Yeah, that's just a man. He just found them. People lift it around as some charitable thing. Uh, that's Alan. It's very quiet. You can never hear a word he says. <laughs> Martin is being mocked uh, by talking about the uh, the Edwardian killer Steiny Morrison, and he's, he's telling Alan about it, and he's doing it in the start of one of his radio shows. <laughs> he's very drunk. He's gonna put set this words. <laughs> 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 Stony Morrison. Pissed on the street near to midnight by Martin Fido. <laughs> Keeping everyone until after midnight. Yeah. It was murder after midnight. Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. No, like the police investigate. Still talking after midnight by Martin Fido. <laughs> you got to send me that. <laughs> you have to send me that. <laughs> Uh, that would be who's thinking this inside? We're going bust. And you have to put the little the captions underneath. And then Stanley Morris. Yeah. Poor be, Alan. But uh, you have to put those balloon things like he's thinking. <laughs> what is he thinking? <laughs> while he's listening to this. <laughs> I don't think Alan's completely sober either. I think he's had quite a few. Look, 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 look at those eyes. <laughs> They're not the eyes of a sober man. Three cabmen yeah. <laughs> very, very dubious um. They carried two people like Stein and Morris down the road. Yeah. Kelly's Stein gone round the bend. No. <laughs> He's living with another hooker there. He's a good looking man. Uh, the girls like him. Oh, no. I snort. I snort. Oh, no. This is a man that doesn't like talking about crime anymore. He likes to talk about literature. Stupid man. So he's, he's talking about the Stein and Morrison. And we went to the music. Silly when you talk. And they completely blow back. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. really is, well, it's only 20 after 4 in the morning in the UK at the moment. <laughs> It's already next week. Who is so Oh my god. He's really interested. Did they break your lens there? Just <laughs> 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 
really bad. Look at the passionate interest in the case. Some would say that the the eyes of a man who no longer has any comprehension of what is being said, the brains elsewhere just dancing through the heather. People Dreaming of haggis. With a slight West Country accent. A great deal, but um, what I'm saying, what I was saying was, you know, <laughs> <laughs> established in, 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 in. the words are. The sexual life of a camel is stranger than anyone thinks, for in the mating season he tries to bugger the sphinx, but the sphinx's back passage is narrow and blocked by the sands of the Nile. And the which accounts for Which the Which accounts for the hump on the camel <laughs> and the sphinx's inscrutable smile. <laughs> yeah. Terrible, I forgot you the words I'm going to go pee. <laughs> Where does one pee here? Somewhere Where Alan, in Alan, can you convert digital late footage to MPEG so I can put that on That's YouTube? <laughs> But he doesn't know fair. what he Do you want to hear what he oh, means? No. I can tell by the way you said that that it's not true. No, it's not. No. No, no, no. Hi, Grey Mare. Dry me going to Whittingham Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Will you go to, go, no, you, no, that's not the place. <laughs> and, and to think, Ma, to think Martin was actually recounting his stories of Dan Farson, the, the, the ripper historian who used to get drunk. Farson was a piss artist, I understand. Yeah. A piss artist? That's spritz speak for a drunk. I know artist. it means drunk, but in the context with all that was going on, yeah. I thought you meant something. I thought you meant making some no, I know that it means drunk, but you're... Peter Davy, Dan Whitten, Harry Orr, Old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all, Old Uncle Tom Cobbley and all, when the wizard whistles high We're stuck now. More, more of a night, all along down, along out, along lane, and Tom Pierce's old mare does appear again. Is it the same verse over and over? I all possibly in the morning. Or, yeah. In the morning. I, 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 I don't know if we'll see you. Oh, well, but, uh, yeah. Okay, bye, Alan. Thank you so much. <laughs> see you soon, Alan. I finished it. I got through the whole Didn't it thing. Didn't just have one verse, though? Herself did try to stop me, but I got through the whole thing. <laughs> So there's the view out. There's a car park over the road. It's on the sixth floor I'm staying. That's the lifts. Been in them quite a few times over the last few days. Take a right turn. Noisy vending machines, which I never used. Coming down to my room, number 624. Now check it out. Here we are. And the bathroom as well. There's the bathroom I had. About half the size of my flat. This is the room I had for the conference. The bed is huge, much bigger than it looks. And I know it looks big, but it's even bigger than it looks. There's a view down the other side. I can't believe the conference is over. I'll fly back to England tomorrow, damn it, today. That's the TV, big screen thing. That's the desk where I finished writing the lecture. And uh, still a view out of the window. Obviously, night view. 
not quite the same as Davey. World's Fair Park over there, there's two houses at the end of a car park. And the street down there. It's Monday morning. <clears throat> yeah, it's about nine o'clock. And of course, I have to go. So, rooms all nice and tidied up. I'm being picked up at three, so I've got six hours from now to go walk around a bit of Knoxville. And all that kind of stuff. They're all over by the shouting. Shouting's over too. It's weird, this conference going on, like everyone, the car going backwards, everyone's gone home. There's only about three or four of us left here, mostly speakers that were staying overnight. And I'm just completely by myself. Okay, so I'm out on the street. It is glorious sun, again. I've got a few hours left before I'm picked up and taken back to McGee Tyson Airport to fly back to the UK. Here's the back of the hotel. And just up there, that was my room. Just there. That's where I slept for four nights. That's, um, that was a coach. Well done. In the sun sphere. Gonna go up to the observation deck and have a look around. It's so quiet around here, there's no one around. And here I am out over Knoxville. That's my hotel just over there. Let me zoom in. That's where I was staying. Sure enough, I'm clearly the only person up here at the moment. That's madness. That's the Tennessee River over there. And if I zoom in properly, it's the Great Smoky Mountains in the distance. Yeah, see them along the back there. There's no one up here, it's just me. It's amazing. Don't know what's going on there. That's obviously a celebration of American culture. I've only got a few hours left, it's very disappointing. And back round again. Okay, so I'm just walking about down downtown Knoxville. It's amazing, it's so quiet. You'd never think this is a big major tower, even a city. 
I'm sweating it so hot. The sea is in the cloud in the sky. Perfect. And this is the middle of October. East Tennessee History Center over there. Spelt center wrong. Someone should tell him about that. This is like the uh, main, mainest street in Knoxville. This is the wonderfully named Gay Street. An old bank building there been demolished. Just been to the visitor centre down there to try and get DVDs or souvenirs or something. But there's less than you find in a, a Guildford tourist information office. And there's some guy there who's doing um, some acoustic set with a guitar and it was full of people sitting down listening to him. So I couldn't get to where a lot of the things were anyway. <clears throat> some statue of some dead bloke showing off. It's half past midday and it's very hot now. It's Church Street. Uh, there's a bloke who's so heavy he went and sunk through the street. It's quite big actually, it's about seven feet tall. Clever. It's brilliant, look. It's Gay Church. It doesn't have a big congregation. That's because it's uh, the southern states and you know how tolerant they are. So that is, that is the Gay Church. <laughs> I just walked into a little parking lot on a side street. This is so like I remember Canada being. Down over there. Just freeways and things. Massive basketball. It's a women's basketball court apparently over there. There's a guy doing some work. Never see him again. and it's just so quiet, there's no one around. Now, uh, Knoxville trolley bus there. My view blocked by a bloody modern coach, there it goes. Who's playing here? Todd Rundgren. Blast from the past. Zoom in on that. Terror. I think he's actually here right now. Quick essential fire hydrants, they are everywhere. And they're all painted the same colour in Knoxville. Oops, across the street. Got to do down there with that. But it ain't here now. It's my chance to cross there. That's the Tennessee, first Tennessee Plaza there retail mall. And I thought, oh, shopping and it's about six junk food outlets and that's it. Very surprised for the US, it's not full of shops everywhere. It's a weird old coach, four weird old coaches. Everything's orange in Tennessee. The Knoxville County Bridge Commission on the other side of the road, built 1897 by some people in Ohio. And here's the bridge. It's quite a long one. In the UK, this would be enormous, but out here, it's just a bridge. And down below me, 
so sad. I've, I'm two hours. I'm being picked up and leaving. But um, over the edge of the bridge there, see there's a freeway beneath or highway. I don't know what the difference is. It's probably a freeway, isn't it? Highways are the motorways, I reckon. And there's a bridge over there. And shit over there. And obviously this great big thing beneath me, which is, uh, it's damn wide actually. This is the Tennessee River. I'll turn the camera back on when I'm standing right over it. No, I won't, because I found a train down there. Look at that. Driven by Casey Jones and his brother Tom. You might think there's something strange about that, but it's not unusual. Oh, there's another really American thing over there. It's this shit from War of the Worlds, look. And tripods. Just keeping an eye on you, making sure you don't do anything wrong. It's going to be such a come down being back in England tomorrow. This is the most amazing place. All right, I am now standing over the Tennessee River. Yep, that's it. It's a river and it's got bridges and boats on it and shit. Right, I've done all I was going to do around the city or town or whatever Knoxville is. Just phoned home. Also phoned Eddie, got his answer phone. That might call for a 3D shot in a moment, that looks very nice. Hidden by the trees, typical of me standing right in the wrong place. Uh, that's the sun sphere over there. I'm going to do some shopping down there. Nothing important. And now this is obviously America. Look at the eagle arches. Wendy's beyond there. Crystal, which is another junk food chain. It's so hot. How American can you get? Varsity Barber Shop. This is Walgreens. It's like mostly a chemist, but it's, um, it's a convenient shop as well. And they sell everything. Yesterday I needed to get postage stamps, duct tape and batteries, and they had the lot. I'm going to go in there again, but I probably won't film in there because that would just be a bit weird. So I've been into Walgreens, I got myself one of the, uh, the Tennessee University orange hoodies. Uh, some of the stores downtown were selling for over $60 and uh, $24. And it's the design I wanted as well rather than the others. But there's so much orange around here. It's because of their football team, the volunteers. It's a massive thing. They, uh, their stadium just for the football team is the seventh largest stadium in the world. It seats over a hundred thousand people. And it's just for a university football team. That's the University of Tennessee over there. Very close to the hotel, which is just down the hill a little bit and up to the left-hand side. Needless to say, the heat is uh, extreme. And it's another one of those wonderful fire hydrants. I'm so easily impressed.
I'm at Knoxville. They got me on an early flight and I ran into Martin and Karen. How weird. Okay, we've just landed in Charlotte. This is in Carolina, not Tennessee anymore. That's our plane. There's Martin waiting for his bags. They have a connecting flight. A load of people here really urgent to get their bags. They have a connecting flight, so we're all going to miss them. But I'm fine. Because the woman who checked me in got me on an earlier flight at her own offer, I'm here early, even though the flight's late. There's a trolley pushing itself. I haven't seen my bag come off it yet. Oh, that's mine, I think. No, that's not mine. I wonder where mine is. So it's now 5.45 and I have two hours before my flight back to the UK. Hope I'm allowed to film in here. There's a plane stuck in mid-air over there. And there's a whole city of Charlotte over there, which I'll never be seeing. In the meantime, with an empty waiting place, I am going to get myself some food because I've not eaten since breakfast. Planes boarding. Plane up there. And um, my last to you. Uh, that's where I had my last meal. Not there. But there. Oh, farewell to USA. I've got to try and find the button to phase it out now. There we are. 